Well, what's up guys? Welcome back to the Chop Shop. And today, we're gonna dig just a little bit further into my 4.3260, so stay tuned. Okay guys, so like I said, I'm gonna tear into this thing just a little bit further. If you watched the previous video, you know I've had the heads off of this thing. And we know that A, it has some seized valves, B, it has a broken valve. Um, but otherwise, this thing does spin freely. I think I want to flip it over. I never pulled the oil pan off of it. I'd like to see if there's any rod damage or anything. I don't know that I'm going to full blown blow it apart, but see if there's any play in the rods or anything. And we'll just kind of go from there. And in case you are unfamiliar with this engine, Though it looks exactly like this engine, this engine being the 79302, that is Sandy's original engine, at least original to when I got it. This being a, I believe it's a 64 and a half, 4.3 liter, 260 cubic inch Windsor. Uh, and yes, I just said 260 cubic inch. It's the predecessor of the 289. In fact, I believe, again, don't quote me, the first generation of the 289 was actually based off of this block, not this block. Then I think the year later they went to this style. Main difference is being, and I know you can't see it from back here, the 260 actually has a five bolt pattern on the bell housing flange. The later models having a six bolt. Another difference in these engines is gonna come up to the accessories. This has a relatively low profile aluminum water pump. This one being kind of a bulky iron one. Another difference is going to be obviously the size of the bolt pattern on the bell housings is the bell housing difference itself. Again, six bolts, five bolts, but the 260 also very clearly lightweight aluminum and don't know the exact difference. Hi, Mr. Bias. Hi, I know. I know. This one, I don't know the, the height or depth difference. This bell housing is more shallow or not as tall as the later model ones. So if you want to run a later transmission, you have to run an adapter or a spacer to make that work. But otherwise, besides bore and stroke, to my knowledge, these are essentially the same engines, air quotes. Um, now what I want to do today is, I think there is actually glue on this thing, I think. Do I have, I have no dip stick? There it is. There it is. Okay, so we do have actually like, surprisingly clean looking oil on this thing. But I want to get the oil drained out of it, flip it upside down, give the rocks a, a little jiggle wiggle. And just kind of see if there's any damage in the bottom end. Maybe pull some caps off. I don't want to full blown disassemble it because I don't have the finances for machine work and getting it back together. Real quick before we do so, speaking of machine work and such, said this is Sandy's new engine or old engine, Flowtech, uh, 185cc, 58cc combustion chambers, Flowtech heads. I'm pretty excited about these. The pistons are at the machine shop that I needed to go pick up. I've got her Hyper Eutectic 40 over flat top pistons and ARP studs installed. And after that, pretty much just need to get the crank rebalanced since the rotating assembly is gonna be a different weight now. And after that, we should be able to bang this bottom end together for the most part. I do believe I have pretty much everything to make that happen. But uh, one more difference, I guess in these is gonna be in the heads. These have really small valves in them that don't necessarily flow that great, but they also have really, really tight combustion chambers in them to help the compression. I assume to help give it a little bit of power from its, low, its uh, small stroke and uh, yeah, words, words and such. Anyways, let's get this crap off of here and uh, see what she looks like on the inside. In case you guys are just curious of where I'm going with this particular build, the answer is I don't exactly know. Obviously, I have Sandy's old dual plane and a 650 vacuum secondary carb on here. 
I don't know that I'm even going to go that far on this build. Um, if you know me, you know that I have an obsession with first gen Razors. I've had four of them, and my first ever project in a hot rod, straight out of high school, was a 83 Ranger with the 4.3260. So that's why I've acquired this engine. I'm basically wanting to rebuild my high school sweetheart. A 260, four speed swaps, first gen Ranger, now, my original one was a long bed. I do want a short bed. But I'm not looking at making this thing super spicy or anything, you know. Probably gonna recycle some parts. I think I'm gonna use Sandy's old cam, which is a comp uh, 268H, I think. Um, it was a high energy cam, and I think it'll probably be perfect for just this mild, very mild build. Did I actually fold this on here? Oh, the trigger is in the way. Dummy, dummy. But let's get these parts out of here. That there was just a nice place for me to put them, so they weren't in the way. All right, let's get these heads off here. Before I rolled this off in the corner, we forgot about for a little bit. Like I said, the, there's some valves stuck on this. I actually smacked a couple of now a hammer sprayed them down with all kinds of lubricant and they've yet to come back up. So this one's still down, this one's still down, this one, all of them on this side are still down. There's one on this side still down, so. I mean, I'm not being naive about it. You know, I have, I have hopes that maybe I can dingle ball this bottom end and throw it back together. I do not know. And I don't remember if there were any marks which there kind of has to be because there is a broken valve on here. So a piston kissed a valve at some point in time. So I pulled all kinds of stuff on here. I didn't need to put that on. There it goes. So now you can see real quick. I don't know the CC of these combustion chambers, but they are quite small. So this engine, like I still got a a valve open right there. But these engines would have made some decent compression with how small the combustion chambers are. Um, my plans are actually to reuse these heads and maybe just deshroud the valves a little bit to get a little bit more flow. Maybe gasket match them. In all honesty, in that little truck, that 260 that I had that was long stop back in the day was just a crane can ignition on it and dual exhaust was was plenty fun I'm not trying to build a race truck by any means just something that sounds cool and it's kind of fun to drive so I'm even thinking maybe using the uh, factory cast iron two barrel and maybe doing the same thing maybe kind of gasket matching that a little bit maybe running like a holly 500, two barrel on it, decent ignition system, and that would probably be about it. You can see there's a valve just hanging out. I don't remember that. I wonder if that broke since that was sitting. It kind of looks like it did. Huh. And this thing, you know what I had it before, the previous guy had rubbed some grease around in there. Now I've got rust crud all up in there. But this thing does. Well, it was spinning relatively free, and I'm just maybe not. Well, get out of here. You're in the way. All right, let's try this again. So, like I said, this thing spins pretty freely. I mean, like I said, I want to, at very least, dingle ball it, ring and bearing it, but it is not locked up. It does feel like it has some, like right now, it feels like it's, feels like there's a tough spot, for sure. 
So it spins, but not as well as I would like for it to. So at this point in time, I guess we'll clean off this mess, drain the oil, flip it over, just kind of see how everything looks. I wonder if these lifters are going to come out easily. So far, so good. Looks like they were spinning properly. Not that, you know, we're, we're using the camera lifters or nothing, but. They still plunge. So the oil looked all right. There was just a little bit of water in it, which is to be expected. And to my knowledge, guys, basically, okay, so this thing came out of a Willys Jeep, actually. They had adapted it to the factory transmission and transfer case and such. Uh, it set out in a field for a long time. I think guy basically put fresh oil in it and went to fire it up, in which case the valves were all locked up. Failure. So you can see, Valve kissed a piston there, and right there. That's all I'm seeing throughout here. Again, I, I had this thing pulled apart a while ago, but this is this as far as we took it down. But um, so the oil is out of it. Let's flip it over and see if the rugs wiggle and jiggle or not. But my surprise, it's actually still cool in here. Trying not to make a huge mess in the garage like I normally do. That's not really helping much, is it? I guess it's better than nothing. I guess it's better than nothing, especially with my puppy running around. I'm too dumb to not drink antifreeze. Freaking mess over the garage. Good surprise. Get this pan off. See what we're working with here. See what's in her. I guess. One thing I am noticing, I'll try and show you here in just a second. I could be wrong about this, but. As you dissect older engines, it's always like cool to see like how much extra time, effort, and forethought went into stuff. But if you look, see these little grooves that run? They're basically like little bead rolls that I assume are gonna provide rigidity in this oil pan and help it stay flat to seal. To my knowledge, that later model one does not have that. So they're a lot more like prone to warpage and leaking. So, go old guys. Digging on in here. I mean, nothing looks horrible. And as far as front to back, these are gonna have a little front to back. It's, I mean, this way, you're gonna have some wiggle. It's this way you don't want. And this one right here, I don't even know if you'll be able to catch it on camera. It does definitely move side to side. Everything else, I think that's just side to side it's doing. Man, everything else seems pretty solid, but I'm willing to bet. Can I can't even notice? She definitely, she's definitely got a little wiggle wiggle in her. Called it. That's our little wiggle worm right there. Definitely, definitely a nice little groove in there. Still, you know, I'm not going to consider that catastrophic by any means. I still think we have a nice solid candidate for a rebuild, but let's pull the other ones off real quick. Maybe get this oil pickup out of the way, and we'll just kind of see what uh, 
what the rest of it looks like again without full assembly I just I don't want crap all over the garage right now he said as there's crap all over the garage <laughs> he seemed very tight makes me wonder how far the guy previously dug into this before me Bones we can get into here. Shit. Yep. That's another nice little groove. Again, I mean, rebuilding an engine, you're going to replace these anyways. Just, again, I'm just trying to get an assessment. That one looks alright. Eh, looks like there might be a little bit of scoring. Yeah. Yeah. Gimme. Give me. Give me this bearing. There's a little bit of wear and some scoring in that one too. Again, I know I've said it like 50 times now. It's being rebuilt, so it is what it is. Let's see what door number one has for us. Normalish wear. I mean, I have no idea how many miles is on this engine, you know, how long it was in a car before it ended up in the willies, how long it sat outside, how it was driven, how it was maintained. And definitely, definitely some miles on it, definitely. That's just a little groove. I mean, not... You know, I ain't mad. I ain't mad. I don't even remember what I paid for this engine. It wasn't very much. Bearings are cheap. Oof. Oof. Well. Okay, not a big deal for the 1050th time. We're replacing bearings anyway, so we're building this engine. So, bearings ain't shit. You know, so. Worst case scenario, this thing goes 10 over, 10 under, and you bang it back together. Another cool oddball difference I legit just noticed in this engine, the pivot ball for your Z bar on the clutch is actually cast into the block. As opposed to later models, you have this bracket that bolts to the bell housing. So that's kind of a neat little difference that I just learned. But uh, yeah guys, I mean, my, my feelings aren't hurt. I knew there was going to be some, some machine costs involved. I want it to be clean, pretty nice. I'm not looking for a crazy amount of horsepower. Super budget build. I mean, Sandy's engine was supposed to be a budget build. And look, here we are. We got, what, $1,200 in heads. We've got, what, $600 with the pistons and machine costs. Whatever balancing the crank is going to cost me. We're probably going to have another $500 in the cam. I really want to run a specific intake. I have a couple intakes in mind. Those are probably going to be a thousand dollars. So this, 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 I guess is no longer a budget build technically with some of the parts it is, but this, I'm not looking like if this thing makes like 200 horsepower, I, I would be stoked. It'll probably never see a dyno or anything, but so, I mean, it's probably going to end up if we have to go 10 over, we're obviously going to have to replace the pistons. When I get this thing in the machine shop, they'll tell me that story if they think it can just be honed and uh, have the cross hatching redone in it. I imagine they'll probably end up turning the crank 10 under, but other than that, I guess that I think I just want a gasket match, all the ports, maybe deshroud the valves a little bit just to help them flow. Uh, a mild, like the, the mild choppy cam that was in Sandy. And like I said, I think I might even 
just port match this old two barrel get like a two inch spacer for it and run just like a holly 500 two barrel on it it'll be plenty enough carburetor for this i think that's probably all it's going to be in fact i'm probably going to even steal sandy's high volume pressure or uh high volume oil pump i'm not using again or dual roller timing chain i mean that engine only had maybe a thousand miles on it before it started getting hot and you know those 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 parts are going to be just fine but uh so we stand guys i just wanted to kind of just been kind of curious just kind of percolating in my head you know what the bottom end of this thing looks like but um you know, we could blow it apart and find out maybe there's some ring damage or anything like that. But I don't see any any damage in, in the the piston walls themselves and the bore. So I think we're going to be just fine. Just some basic machine work. Banging this thing back together. And again, it's, it's way a future project because I don't even have the Ranger. Nor do I have the funds to do literally anything that I'm talking about right now. But, uh, yeah, I just wanted to kick you guys out of video. Check this thing out. If you would... If you like what you see, if you want to help support Epic's Chop Shop and the builds, check out the Buy Me a Coffee link in the description of this video. Like, subscribe, share, spread the word, help us grow. We're we're slowly getting a little bit of somewhere, something, something. Little update before you ran off, before it ran off, because I didn't make a video on it. Made a chain guard for the mini bike, as well as a quick change spring actuated i guess if you want to call it that holder for your favorite liquor for the mini bike i also did a baffle and the exhaust because obviously this side was flowing way better than this side so i put a baffle in this side to help push a little bit of it this way it did help a little bit help a little bit it also sounds pretty cool so again like subscribe share buy your boy a coffee you know what he needs it's caffeine or speed parts whatever but uh that's it guys, and as always I have a hell of a mess to clean up, so I'm out.